Hi, welcome to Deering Estate. On today's virtual field trip, we're going to be exploring the seagrass beds of Biscayne Bay to find out what critters live within it. At Deering Estate, we have two miles of coastline. The portion of the ocean closest to our coastline is what we consider Biscayne Bay. In Biscayne Bay, we have a couple of different habitats. We're going to be focusing today on the seagrass beds. For some of the smaller critters of Biscayne Bay, they actually start off their life cycle within the mangroves that you see behind me. When they're in those mangroves, they're protected by the prop roots. Once they are large enough, they're able to make their way out into the seagrass beds that we're going to be exploring today. The seagrass beds have a couple of different functions, but their primary functions are to act as a fruitful hunting ground for those animals and to produce necessary oxygen. When you're conducting a seagrass survey like the one we're going to do today, there's a large variety of species that you could encounter. Most of them are going to be smaller fish, but there's also a chance we could run into some invertebrates like sea urchins and sea stars. There's also a small chance that we could see some of our larger aquatic animals like sea turtles and even manatees who love to snack on seagrass. As always, safety comes first. Whenever you're going to be swimming in water, it's important that you make sure you're being monitored by a parent or a guardian. It's also important that you wear protective gear like a life jacket. This is going to keep you afloat just in case anything happens. Additionally, there's a lot of sharp rocks or shells that could be hiding within that seagrass, so wearing water shoes is going to protect your feet. Today we're going to be practicing catch and release, which means we're going to be using these nets to catch some critters from the seagrass bed, and then we're going to be placing them in a temporary holding tank so that we can view them and identify what those critters are. When we're done, we're going to be carefully putting them back into their habitat where they started. Today we're going to be using nets like this one to help us catch sea critters. Now imagine for a second that the grass beneath me is actually seagrass. When we're using our nets, we're going to gently sweep across the surface of the grass, not dig down inside of it. Once we think we've collected something, we're going to bring the net up to the surface of the water, but leave the bottom of the net slightly submerged in the water so the animals within it can still breathe. Then we're going to check and see if there's an animal. If there is, we're going to be placing it into our tank. If there's not, we'll continue our search. take a look inside the tank to see what type of critters we were able to collect during this seagrass survey. Most of the animals we were able to find today live in or around sargasm, which is a type of pelagic algae that is free floating. This is a grass shrimp. We are able to find grass shrimp in Darien State's seagrass beds because we have brackish water. Brackish water is a mixture of salt water from the ocean and fresh water from canals that get pumped out into the bay. Grass shrimp like this one molt their exoskeleton when they grow, and they are considered omnivores. They often feed on plankton. If you'd like to learn more about plankton, check out our virtual field trip, Plankton Float. This is a Sargassium nudibranch. Nudibranchs are a type of sea slug. They come in almost every color of the rainbow. There are over 3,000 species of nudibranchs worldwide. They can live in shallow water, and some can even live at depths of 2,500 meters. Some nudibranchs are poisonous, while other nudibranchs just pretend to be. Nudibranchs feed on the stinging cells of hydrozoids and can store those cells in the rear end of their body for protection. This is a sargasm crab, a type of swimming crab that lives in sargasm. It shares its fragile mini ecosystem with up to 70 other species. This is a checkered pufferfish, a common species found in Biscayne Bay. They get their name from the checkered pattern on their scales. Checkered pufferfish contain a toxin that makes them inedible to humans. They're actually not great swimmers. You'll typically see them swimming with sudden burst. Much like other pufferfish, they have a defense mechanism that allows them to puff up or inflate their stomachs with water, not air, in order to make themselves seem larger and less approachable. This is going to help them because they can intimidate their prey and they can intimidate any predator trying to consume them. 
This is a marine hermit crab. Hermit crabs belong to the crustacean family, and they can be found living all over the world. There are two types of hermit crabs, aquatic and terrestrial. This one is an aquatic species. We usually find these hermit crabs in Biscayne Bay in the shallow coastal waters. They often live in colonies, meaning more than one hermit crab lives together. We hope you enjoyed this virtual field trip to the Daring Estate. Remember, if you're planning on doing a seagrass survey of your own at home, make sure you return the critter back to their natural habitat at the end of your observation. Plus, if you find something that you can't identify, take a picture, snap a video, and send it to us at Discover Deering on Instagram. See you next time.